This is titled, While We Were Sleeping, because for many of us who are just waking up to a situation we didn't realize had been in the making for many years. So this is a very high-level overview of an extremely dynamic and complex challenge, but we have to start somewhere. So what happens when your present and your recent past is mostly digital? What happens to our shared cultural memory? It's time for a 30-second history lesson to help us understand how we got here. The Government Printing Office was established in 1860 and later the National Archives in 1934. Any records, reports, or publications that a federal agency produced would go through one of these two agencies. Further, those official records, reports, or publications would be deposited in designated libraries across the country so that the public could have access to them at no cost. In 1993, under President Bill Clinton, records, reports, and publications were to be offered online as well. From this point forward, there's a massive growth in born digital federal information published by agencies that did not flow through a central office like the GPO. Fast forward to 2010, under President Barack Obama, data.gov was established to accommodate and make available the rapidly growing number of data sets produced. It's really important to recognize that our researchers, faculty, and students rely on federal information daily, whether it's for historical research that tracks policy changes over time, for data mining, or for developing complex models to project future climate scenarios, publicly funded information is essential to all disciplines. And context matters. Information devoid of context is meaningless, and context in a digital environment can be lost or changed with a keystroke. So the good news is that the Wayback Machine exists, and it's been capturing web pages for many years. It maintains context, but it's not able to get everything. It can't get data sets, video, or animations. It can't capture live streaming data, embedded maps, query tools, or databases. In November 2016, there was a confluence of events. With the impending administration change, the good work done by the team at the end of term harvest was getting a lot of notice by the press, by researchers, and the public. In addition, in, at Penn, we had some researchers who were self-organizing to ensure that essential climate and environmental data be backed up and made available before the change in administrations occurred. So let's look at each of these a bit closer. The End of Term Harvest Project is a partnership between the California Digital Library, the Library of Congress, the Internet Archive, the University of North Texas Libraries, and the U.S. Government Publishing Office. Starting in 2008 and recurring with each successive change in terms afterward, the project web archived federal websites based on sites the team knew about as well as seeds or URLs that others could submit for saving. As you can see by this chart, past year there was a lot of interest and by the most recent account the archive contains approximately 225 terabytes of compressed data. While end of term interest was growing, there was a parallel growing sense of urgency among climate researchers to rescue data that was very likely vulnerable. Researchers, scientists, faculty, students, local community organizations, citizens, and libraries started to hold special events to extract the information that can't be web archived to put into a type of data refuge. To date, there have already been 12 related events with more planned across the country and in Canada. It's important to emphasize that libraries and the skills librarians bring to these events are essential to ensuring research quality data that can be sourced and cited. So let's take a step back just for a minute. We're focused on born digital federal information on the web. The Wayback Machine gets most of the web pages, and Data Refuge aims to get everything else through events or through the work of dedicated teams. It's a very manual process. The more we participated in Data Refuge events and talked with colleagues about rescuing data, the more we wondered how we could scale these efforts. So many librarians were offering to help, and this is exactly what libraries do and have done for hundreds of years. We preserve materials in context. We care about and verify the chain of custody of our materials and now data. This means that we know who's touched the data and where it came from, also called provenance. This is so critical for digital data. Imagine this, without any ability to check a copy against a trusted source, there is no way to cite or have any confidence in that copy. Furthermore, without a trusted source backed up in multiple locations, the internet could become flooded with fake data, making it impossible to use it in any meaningful way. 
So we went to the whiteboard. Data Refuge is about preserving what we can now, urgently, and advocating for the availability of future data. This is done through events, through stories, and connecting with our communities. Further, in partnership with libraries, we can have confidence that the data we are extracting and preserving follows an established workflow that is common in libraries. We believe that this could definitely be a model to scale across libraries and to expand to include more types of federal information beyond climate and environmental data. What libraries bring to Data Refuge is incredible institutional power that amplifies these rescue efforts. We have experts in archiving, preservation, government documents, and metadata. We have tools, technologies, and collaboration platforms that we can bring to bear. We have a vibrant community that's been wrestling with the complicated challenge of born digital government information for decades. And last but not least, our mission is to preserve knowledge and make it accessible to future generations. If we don't step up to do this, who will? Penn Libraries is trying to facilitate quick action across our libraries. It seems like each day the picture becomes a bit more clear thanks to engaged people and thoughtful ideas and examples. It's going to take all of us in libraries to do this work. We are cautiously optimistic for the future and we look forward to the day when there is no longer a need for any data refuge events. This work is manually intensive and it's hard to coordinate and hopefully we will develop future processes to smooth those things out. But until then, we'll see you online.